Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by, by Tri-County Logging. Experienced in sustainable forestry practices, Tri-County Logging can help you manage your property by keeping your woods healthy and generate income. Serving Southern and Mid-Michigan for nearly 50 years, tricountylogging.com. Well, hey everyone, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. Thank you so much for joining us this week. We've got a special show this week. We also have a short show this week because our PBS stations are pledging this week, so make sure you pledge early and often. We're gonna have a theme for this week's show and that is pike spearing. Now, if you've ever tried that, you know how exciting it can be. And if you've never tried it, well, we're gonna show you how exciting that it really can be when things get hot and heavy in the ice shack. We're gonna show you two different stories on this week's episode, and we're also gonna have a pike recipe. So lots of good stuff on this week's show. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze Dancing on the pine forest floor The autumn colors catch your eyes Here come the crystal winter skies It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see This is their finest legacy The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees The sweet smell of nature's in the air From the Great Lakes to the quiet stream Shining like a sportsman's dream It's the love of Michigan we all share Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988, offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in-store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By Green Mark Equipment. Green Mark Equipment is a John Deere dealership network in southwest Michigan and northern Indiana. Green Mark provides sales and services to farmers, commercial businesses, large property owners, and homeowners. Information about pricing and products available can be found online at greenmarkequipment.com by Angler Quest Pontoons. Angler Quest is a Michigan-based company building boats designed for comfort and fishing functionality. For more information, anglerquestpontoons.com. By Polar Craft Boats, offering riveted and welded boats for the outdoor enthusiast. Whether you're targeting fish or waterfowl, Polar Craft Boats have several models to choose from that keep you high and dry. For more information, polarcraft.com. Every year, good friend of the show Keith Stanton and I spend at least a couple of days on the ice together trying to spear a few pike. Not all of our trips are successful, but it's always a good time. We usually try to fish different bodies of water, and this year we decided to try Lake St. Clair. Well, first time on the ice this year, I couldn't be more thrilled. It's very cold, very windy, um, but we're fishing. Been waiting, all my buddies have been going, and I've been busy making decoys and lures and getting work done. And when Jordan called and said, hey, let's go fishing, uh, I was ecstatic to do so. So um, this is usually a pretty good fishery. You usually see multiple fish, and we've got the option of smear and perch today as well. We're on Lake St. Clair. Uh, so we pike and perch. And usually what I love about this fishery is you're just seeing fish all day long, um, constant, several different species. And usually the pike are pretty thick, pretty healthy. Um, they're not always 40 inches, but they're usually uh, good solid fish. So, and the water's clear and uh, we're fishing, we're not working. So life is good. Right there, fish, 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 fish. Bad dude, dude, the hog. Did you get him? Yeah. Good, pretty fish. Just like that, baby. Our luck can change just that fast, my friend. I can't believe that. Have you been in here 10 minutes, Jordan? 
there's a long backstory to me and Jordan spearing together. Let me tell you, we, every blue moon we have a successful trip. But uh, we drove a long way today. It's extremely cold out. We didn't even have the door zipped up on the shanty, and there was a three-pound bass in the hole. We've been here maybe 15 minutes and constantly watching fish. I think we've seen six or seven different species of fish in 15 minutes. Um, happened to look down. This dude came cruising through. Uh, it's my first fish of the season. Um, came in on a uh, Doot decoy. It's a uh, yellow, green, and red new body style we're making this year. and Apparently it works. 15 minutes. Fish on the ice, baby. After a great start, I leaned over to check one of my cameras only to have my phone fall into the water. After a lengthy adventure with a perch spear and an ice saw, we were able to retrieve it from the bottom of Lake St. Clair and continue fishing. Just like that. Wow. That was 19 seconds after you switched it. Well, it's been an adventure. We've only got about 35 minutes actually spearing because after I got that first pike, uh, old Fumble Fingers dropped his phone down the bottom of the lake and we got it back. So today we've speared two pike and one iPhone, believe it or not. But this guy, I tell people all the time, you know, pike are curious by nature and so constantly switch the colors of your decoy. And I, about 40 minutes ago, 30 minutes ago, I said to Jordan, Hey, let's switch out colors. No, let's stick with that one. Well, finally, I said, we're switching. We put the red and white on, and the camera showed it was 19 seconds from the time we dropped that red and white decoy down until this guy came flying in. Um, so, I, like I said, change your decoys often. If you're not seeing anything for a while, our hole went just blank for a while. Red and white decoy, 15 minutes. Bam, we're on the board with pike number two. So. At some point, I think Jordan just doesn't want to throw and miss today, so he's letting me do the spearing, but I think he's going to have to hold the steel at this point. So um, We're doing good. It's a beautiful 18-degree day here in Michigan. Spearing Northerns. Love it. Oh, jeez, dude. That's huge. I got it. I got it. Get it. Get it. Quick. Quick. You got him, nice, you got him. <laughs> That's a dandy, That's Jordan. A Dude, oh, that is a jump. Oh, nice. Not by much, but I got it. Nice. Well, we're out here trying to spear some pike. Keith has already speared two today. Um, we do have the perch spear handy, just in case this happened. We had a jumbo swim through, had a shot at it kind of going out of the hole, and got lucky and uh, got this one. We're still hoping for a couple more pike but you can't beat a bonus jumbo perch like this. We'll take them all day long if they'll keep swimming through. So the fish were hot and heavy. Um, it didn't take long for that first pike to come in here. Well, I was able to get that done. Immediately following, Jordan dropped his phone in the water. So we scared every fish on this side of the border out of here trying to get his phone out. We did manage to get his phone out um, and it's actually working, so that's good. Uh, a short time later, we dropped a new color decoy in and within a few seconds uh, another pike came zooming in and kind of gave us a picture perfect shot came zooming in fast and then just stopped and let me line things up and and get a good shot on him and since then we've just been uh, enjoying the day having a good time Jordan took over on the spear um, was able to get a perch and uh, a good perch and just been watching I don't know what even we're up to now, several different species of fish, and I keep looking down here because there's bass zooming in and out of the hole. So, so far it's been a great day. If it, if it ended right now, we'd be, we'd be winning. Oh, jumbo, 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 jumbo. Get him? Very difficult throw, very difficult throw. Does that mean you got him? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> oh, did I get him? Is he even on the spear? <laughs> I think I pinched him. <laughs> well, all of a sudden, the perch just started showing up in here. We've been seeing them here and there all day, but now all of a sudden we're... Start to see quite a few more. 
That's not a bad fish. Eight inches, nine inches. So that's kind of the nice thing about being able to spear these perch, all them little fish that you're not going to take home and eat. You know, they swim away unhooked, unhandled, unharmed, and you're only taking home the ones that that are going in the frying pan. So that's the beauty of how you can do catch and release with the spearing is we've had a lot of fun watching and missing these perch all day long. And they've swam away, uh, you know, unharmed and unhooked and on to grow up and live another day. And uh, the ones that are big enough and that we want and we're lucky enough to stab, they're going home and going in the frying pan. Got him, nice. J Money. Wasn't as big as I thought, but. Decent. Heck yeah. I'll eat that. Look at that spear job, though. Oh, that's. That's not. That's not fair. He didn't have a chance. That's like you've done it before. Imagine perch spear. These are a lot harder to spear than pike. So. This is where your pike was when you speared it. Well, that's just that shows you how good I am at actually calling on that. Well, one thing's for sure. Keith and I always have a good time on the ice. And I'm sure I haven't heard the end of the phone spearing jokes. Pike spearing isn't for everyone, but it's worth a try if you've never done it before. And it can be a great way to spend a day on the hard water. Well, as you can see, a few years back, they had plenty of good ice there on Lake St. Clair. Well, this year, that was not the case. There was really very little, if any good, safe ice on Lake St. Clair. And that was the case in most of southern Michigan and mid-Michigan. But last year, well, they had just enough. down here on the Maple River uh, on a friend of ours property generous enough to let us come down here and be able to do this today uh, we've got some friends right here Bruce George and Doug George and our kids uh, Bruce has been down here he's kind of our uh, guy that kind of got us into this so uh, happy to have Bruce here with us and uh, we're gonna try to do some smearing the boys are gonna be in the tent together and Doug and his dad will be in the other tent and we'll kind of go back and forth we're gonna have a, a bank side lunch today, some venison stew, and a uh, great day to be on the river today. After getting everything set up, we were ready to climb into the tents, hoping a few pike would swim by. But first, we had to see who was going to throw the spear. That's how three rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Yes! <laughs> Let's go! Who gets it? I get it. <laughs> like always. Well, I started spearing down here in probably 1963. <laughs> we always had pretty good luck, but I think it was, uh, it was a couple foot deeper back then. And uh, we always walked in from the from the gravel pit right there. I can see the hills. We walked in from that way. And we speared here and then we speared up above on, uh, up further towards the mirror, or towards, uh, yeah, mirror. We speared there a couple times. And, and of course up on, we speared up on the, the Grand a number of times. Did real good up there. We see pike, mostly pike, carp, suckers, and uh, a few walleyes. Yeah, the carp were, I, I don't think there was a carp here in the river that there was. We'd see carp all the time in the, in the holes. But uh, I, think, I think there's, I know there's less carp here now than there was. We'd, we'd get pike. We usually, put, we usually took one or two and just enjoyed looking at them. That was that was more fun than spearing them. We got everything but fish. Yep. Yeah. The first couple of hours were pretty slow, so we decided to break for lunch in hopes that the pike would be more active in the afternoon. 
When spearing, things can and often do happen fast. And not long after we climbed back in, our luck was about to change. Yeah, there's something today that they're gone. I mean, they're up in the river. A lot of times you see sucking carp, the piker with them. Okay. I'd say anyway. I hope not, but. Yep. Well, that's fishing, you know, and you just never know. God. When we were down to Weber Dam a couple weeks ago there. We're just coming by. You miss him? Oh, nope, I got him. Here we go, here we go. Pike on! Uh. Bruce George was, was running the, the decoy, the bay, and he uh, uh, had some guys drilling some holes over here for tip-ups and uh, Pike come through and hit the decoy and it came back through and we were able to stick it with a with the spear. One down. Maybe the boys can get some action next over there. They said that if Dad gets one, we're gonna know about it. He'll start hooting and hollering. <laughs> I run the decoy and Darren did the work spear. Yeah, he come in and grab it, went on through, and I got him to come back. He had it right in his mouth. He took it down. After putting our first pike on the ice, we had hoped things would pick up. But unfortunately, that was not the case, and we ended our trip with just the one pike. But it was still a fun day on the hard water with good people, good food, and good weather here in southern Michigan. It was a great day on the river today. Uh, we only had one pike uh, down today, but uh, can't go wrong on a sunny Sunday like this on the river. Uh, the pike came hard today and uh, that's why they call it fishing. Well, to kind of round out things on this week's show, if you happen to get out there and do a little pike spearing or if you catch some pike with hook and line, one thing you might want to try is pickling your pike. A few weeks back, I was on Crystal Lake in Mason County trying to get enough pike for a pickled pike recipe. Well, the boys finally found some fish, and I was back to learn how to pickle pike. Over the past couple weeks, we've filled up a bucket of some fish. Uh, here we have some bone-in pike that we um, have caught. And basically what we're doing here is pickling it, and the pickling dissolves all the bones so that when you eat it, you're not biting through a bunch of uh, bones, and it's a good way to use all the fish uh, because a lot of people like to throw away part of the pike if not most of it so so in this bin here we have a mixture of vinegar and salt and fish and uh, basically what we do is we take about 75 vinegar 25 water and we mix enough into this brine so that all the, the fish is completely covered and um, once you cover the fish we add salt to it and for each quart of vinegar that you use, we do about um, three quarters of a cup of canning salt. You mix it all up good, and you put it in the refrigerator for five days. After we've uh, let the fish sit in the brine for five days, stirring it every day, um, we take it and we make a canning brine that we're gonna put in the jars, and it's gonna sit in that for another five to seven days. Uh, we add some vegetables to that, and uh, after it sits in the refrigerator for five days, um, it's ready to eat. So once you rinse your fish, go ahead and get your sugar, spices, and vinegar to a boil for about 10 minutes. Then let that cool to room temperature, and while you wait, you can get your veggies cut up. All right, so we're back here. Um, we've got our brine. It's all cooled off. We brought a mixture of pickling spice, vinegar, and sugar um, to a boil. We let it boil for about 10 minutes, and then we put it in the snow bank, and now we have it back to a cool temperature. And Adam's going to show you what we're doing next. All right, so we have some sanitized brand new jars, uh, sanitized them, cleaned them up. And now we're just going to package it up. So our ratio has kind of been onion for the base and then a little bit of fish. 
and then maybe a couple cloves of garlic. And then we'd have all these peppers, jalapenos, um, asparagus, because you got to have asparagus if you're going to pickle something. And you just fill your jars. You want them to be, you know, near the top. And then we'll pour our brine in there and seal the jars off and put them in the fridge. And maybe a week. Yeah. A little we, longer, better. We don't actually seal the jars. We just close them up and put them in the fridge. So they're not technically canned, so you have to keep them in the fridge after you complete this process. Yep. I have to say this fish was really good, and the veggies and peppers were outstanding. So if you get some small pike this year, you may want to keep a few to chunk up for pickled pike. For the full recipe, you can check out our website. Well, hey everyone, thank you so much for watching Michigan Out of Doors this week. Make sure you are joining us over the next couple of weeks. Lots of good stuff coming. We just taped Big Buck Night East in Novi just last week. And next week we'll be taping Big Buck Night West in Grand Rapids. Those are always a lot of fun, big stories to be told there. We are chasing some good ice still in northern Michigan, and there's still some rabbit hunts to be had. So make sure that you are getting out and enjoying what our state has to offer. And if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by Do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? You can get there with Greenstone. Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit GreenstoneFCS.com By Alta Equipment Company, providing sales, rentals, service, and parts because uptime matters. From earth moving to landscaping and light construction, Alta offers over 50 brands across seven Michigan locations to serve you. More information online or 844-GO-2-ALTA. By RBM Jigs, a Michigan-based company serving ice fishing anglers around the state and throughout the country. Specializing in ice fishing gear, RBM Jigs manufactures tungsten jigs, soft plastics, and much more. Online at lakeeffectlures.com. By Showspan, producing consumer shows that include the ultimate sports show in Grand Rapids, over 350 exhibitors, outdoor gear, boats, seminars, Lake Ultimate, and Big Buck Night, the ultimate sports show at the DeVos Place in Grand Rapids. When I want to far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. That's where I'm from, and I'll show you my hands. Lord above.